<laughs> In my life, <laughs> oh, I was born in 1960 uh, something. Uh, my mother, <laughs> please. <laughs> she says the whole war she spent in a bunker. No, actually she says she was a fighter during the Second World War. But she spent the whole war in the bunker, or near one. And she let some comrades into the forest, you know. Why did they, those people go into the damn forest? Please don't ask me. I don't know and I don't want to know. No. I, uh, I am proud. I'm really proud that I don't know the name of a single secretary of the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. I don't want to know anything about this country. I don't give a shit about this country's history or geography. You know, fortunately, I'm, I mean, unfortunately, I do know about our communist leader, uh, the, the late great comrade Tito. Uh, he was a president for 30 years. Can you imagine the same person 30 years? Well, unlike you, I saw him hundreds of times, you know. We lived in the city of Uvala, and Uvala was on the road. Tito drove every Saturday morning to his beloved Brioni Island on the Adriatic Sea. And we little girls had to put on little blue skirts and little white socks and stand on the side of the road since the early morning. You know, the whole school was standing, every child. In one hand, flowers. In the other, the paper flag of the communist Yugoslavia. And we were waving and waving and waving, you know, five hours, six hours, seven hours, forever. Because nobody knew when the comrade Tito was coming. You know, finally, our teacher screamed, attention, children, he's coming, he's coming. So, you know, we're waving and smiling and waving. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's not him. That's not him. Okay. Oh, no, it's him. It's really him. Children, smile. Okay, so we hip, hip, hooray, hip, hip, hooray. And, you know, we threw the fucking flowers at his cabin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, now when I think of it, I would throw the fucking flowers straight into Comrade Tito's face. It landed on my husband's side of the bed, right in the middle of his blue pajamas. Now, I shouldn't tell you this, but uh, I will, because I like you. When my husband was going out of town, he left me uh, four chocolate bars. And he said, Nina, if you forget about me, I will kick your ass. Now, at this very moment, my right hand is taking the second bar of the fourth, the second piece of the fourth bar into my mouth. My damn hands, you know? I hate women my age who can't control themselves. I hate when they sit and eat and eat and eat. Mm. But you know, what can I do if this chocolate makes me feel so much better? Well, when I was young, <laughs> a long time ago, I was thin as a stick and I could stuff myself with chocolate all day long. But so what? We didn't have any chocolate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my mother. She was thin as a stick, too, in 1960 something. You know, I've got a photograph. Oh, yeah. She's sitting at a wooden table of some kind. Oh, she's a fucking big deal. She's a head of the government house bureau. She's wearing white blouse, you know, black wool skirt, skirt, long, long, like. Thick white socks and heavy army boots. No, that was her style. Even in the summer. Okay, the comrade comes in, tall, dark, in uniform. He's helping another comrade from the central committee, who is moving into our city, and my mother has to shout in the apartments. Well, let's go on. 
nice apartment, my mother raises the wooden blinds, the ocean, five bedrooms, crystal chandeliers, you know, high ceilings. My mother and the comrade go into one of the bedrooms. He throws my mother onto the bed and he takes off her underwear. He pulls down his pants, he spreads my mother's legs and squirts me into her. Mm. And my mother, nothing. She doesn't scream. She doesn't ask any question. The comrade gets of my mother, takes the crystal chandelier from the ceiling, gives it to her and says, this is for you, from the central committee. Bye. Bye, said my mother. For five months, she waited for her period in vain. And then she told her story, not to her mother, not to her grandmother, not even to a girlfriend, but to another male comrade. Oh, he listened, he understood, and he went to another city and found my father. Well, his name was Zivorat Babic. He was a happily married man, a proud father of twins, highly respected member of the Communist Party. He was also an honorable man, so he acknowledged me. And that's what it's written on my gift birth certificate. Father Zivorat Babic. That's how I became a Serb. Oh, half so. No. No. My mother was a proud Croatian, but she didn't care. She had a Serbian baby in her belly. Oh no, no. That that. Besides, in old Yugoslavia, that wasn't a pro That wasn't the problem. You know, I think that sometimes that if a secret officer hadn't fucked my mother in 1960 something, she would have died a virgin. <laughs> the party. The party was the world to her. She loved the party, the party loved her, and they both didn't feel any other need for love. And I was a gift from the party, <laughs> delivered personally through a delegate. Oh, God. You know, I asked my mother like a thousand times, why? Why didn't she ask a party for something else, like, like a nice apartment for us? She would always say, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I fought for. Well, what did you fight for, you crazy woman? What? For this bloody mess, for those killings, for this war? If my husband didn't sell a few stolen cameras and a few stolen TVs, my mother would die of hunger. But she says, oh, because of you children, now I can sleep peacefully. Really, mother? But I can sleep peacefully. Why did you fuck up my sleep? Why did this prick, Zivorad Babic, acknowledge me? Tell me why. Oh, Nina, things were different then. Hmm. Very different, mother. Did you notice that Serbs and Croats are not comrades anymore? They kill each other, mother. Who am I? On which side am I? What am I supposed to do? Go out on the street and scream, I'm sorry, I'm sorry my father was a Serb, but I'm not your enemy. I don't want to kill you, I'm not your enemy. It's all shit. You know, I got a letter. I got a, I got a letter from the government. And they, and they said, they, the, the letter says that either I have to leave Croatia or apply for a resident permit. Resident permit in my own city. Oh, where, where am I supposed to go? Where? To Serbia? I don't know anybody in Serbia. My daddy never gave me phone number. So, so I went. I went and I uh, uh, applied for the, the, the resident permit. I was waiting like three weeks in line with all the Serbs, Croats, and Muslims, and Alpinians. And, you know, finally I, uh, I enter a room, you know, and... Uh, a woman was sitting there, just uh, calm, just like you, calm. And I give her my birth certificate. And she says, hmm, Babich, hmm, so you're a Serb. I say, no, I'm a Croat. 
She says, oh, was your father, Zivorat Babic, fighting in the Serbian army? So I say, I don't know. I've never met my father. My mother is Croatian, my daughter is Croatian, my husband is Croatian. I was born here around the corner near the bakery. And she says, we need your father's address. So I say, I don't know his address. Resident permit denied. Come next. So I say, wait, you can do it to me. I need my paper so I can keep my job. I have a daughter. He pulls, she pulls out the gun and screams, get out, you Serbian bitch, out. Get out, you Serbian bitch, or I kill you. So I obviously got out. What could I do? You know, and I was crying. I was thinking like, why is she telling me that I am a Serb when I'm not? I don't feel like I'm a Serb and I don't want to be a Serb and I'm not a Serb. And I had to stop for some volume. I had to take some volume. Back then, one volume was enough. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, when I, I stopped for some water in the drugstore, and I'm drinking the water, and I see that all the people are moving away from me. And I'm thinking, I'm standing alone, and I'm thinking, how do they know that I'm a Serb? How? I don't even look like a Serb. I mean, I don't have this written on my forehead. And then I realized, I was so scared in that government office that I shit my pants. I was smelling terribly. You know, the next day my husband gave that bitch from the government $3,000 and I got my resident permit. Oh, I've got it. <laughs> and it says, I am Croatian. Now I am Croatian, you see? After a few thousand dollars, I am Croatian. Now I am fucking Croatian! Now that night I, uh, I had sex with my husband and I didn't come, no. But I yelled. I yelled for a hell of it. Let them have it. Let my Serbian yell mix with their Croatian air! or the sixth? I think it's the tenth. Uh, scene. 